We are a bit surprised. Yep. We always start with the, the typical question. Okay. <laughs> okay. <You might> <laughs> okay. Like how did you end up in Bitcoin? What is your journey? Oh, my journey to Bitcoin. Well, so it started actually in 2011. So okay. I'm a geek. My background was I was a CTO or application architect in many very popular tech companies. And I also was always interested. I talked to all my friends about how the world was not really fair. There was lots, it's not really meritocratic. And that means the world was losing out. We were, there was people around the world who, if they had the right chance, will improve the entire world. Now, Bitcoin came along and within a period of about a month or two, three or four friends of mine sent me messages saying, you would love this because it's both technology and it both deals with the problems that you keep talking about. So I read the white paper. I thought it was an amazing idea. And I, I bought a, a few Bitcoin. At that time, it was only a few pounds of Bitcoin. And I forgot about it because I thought it's a great idea, but I didn't know whether it would be stopped by governments and so on. Yeah. Then two years later, I was selling my previous company and my soon-to-be co-founder came up to me and said, look, we should set up a Bitcoin exchange in the UK. And I'm Bitcoin, it's still around. So I checked and it was still around and it had grown in value. And so we had this incredible technology, incredible idea, which also had staying power. It was anti-fragile. It got stronger when it was attacked. And I thought, okay, I have to be involved in this. And we set up CoinFloor, which went on to become the UK's longest running Bitcoin exchange. Sold it two years ago. And after that, I set up with my new co-founders, Eric and Justin Fetty, that aims to bring Bitcoin to billions of users worldwide. If you, if you had to explain your solution, oh. in one around five. Five oh, years yeah. old. Maybe, why 10, 10 years five old. Five or 10 years old. <laughs> yeah. So, Fetty, Bitcoin is incredible technology. Yeah. It's an incredible system to allow you to move money around and so on. But, For various reasons, it doesn't allow you to have more than a certain number of users on it. And so we need ways, if we're going to have it be used worldwide, to allow it to extend it, to make it capable to handle billions of millions, if not billions of users. Now, there's a technology called Lightning, which helps. It makes payments low cost and high speed, but it still doesn't get you all the way there. That may get you to tens of millions of users. Fedi is the missing piece. Fedi Mint and Fedi are the missing piece because they allow you to scale to billions of users and they also allow you to improve your privacy, which is important when you are thinking about the whole world. And finally, when you're thinking about the whole world, every, every community, every person has individual requirements that are different from others. So you also need a way of extending the functionality. Fedi and Fedi Mint give you all those three, extensibility, scalability, and privacy. So it, may, it makes Bitcoin and Lightning scale to the world. Okay, I see. And um, like to have Did the, I do that like, was yeah, that, yeah, I think I could cool. do it in ways which <laughs> someone non-technical will understand. But maybe with a kind of example to, to kind of to be able to imagine how it's practically uh, implementing. So like an example. So yeah. there's a community in, from the top of my head. There are many communities that can use it. Communities can be companies, they can be organizations, They can be villages or they can be families or anything in between. But just one example, um, there's a community of um, farmers and farmer cooperatives in Togo. Togo is a country in, in West Africa. Now, each one of these farmers individually take their money and their earnings to buy pesticide and fertilizer. And they use that to put on their crops to make sure they have higher yields. Yeah, and they don't have so much damage from pesticides, from pests. Now, the problem is they buy individually and they need to, one, find a mechanism to work together to pool their resources and also to organize with each other. If you use Fedi, each community, and they can't do this with banks and existing other systems because they don't work in those countries or they're too complicated or they're too high cost, etc. Instead, they can set up a federation which is what you we call this community custody platform. They can set up a federation themselves so they can be their own community bank. They also can have their own conversations happening as well, all run by themselves. And then each one can have the Fedi software. And from within the Fedi software, they can chat with other people. They can organize, they can discuss. 
and then privately. went private, privately to the organization and they can all individually have their own balances of Bitcoin. Also, because of the extensibility, it's possible to take the Bitcoin and lock its value to USD. So you can make a stable, so your value is stable to USD. So you don't have to worry about the volatility or the price movements of Bitcoin. And then when it comes time to buy um, pesticide and fertilizer, they can organize by the chat and then everybody can send money into a pooled fund and then they can pay the supplier for their entire requirement and therefore get a discount on pricing. And then they can organize again through the app the distribution of pesticide and fertilizer to each other, allowing them to buy more fertilizer, more pesticide for less, better outcrops, better growth, more revenue, lower costs, more wealth to the community. Okay. And that's one a of million. a million examples. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty <coughs> cool. Yeah, I think. Do, do you have um, any like living uh, example right now? Is it live? That's one. Yeah. Okay. That's one. We have. We. So this is could be used by anybody anywhere. Whether it's a a major international conglomerate, pan global conglomerate, or company, or whether it's a, a community of farmers cooperatives or a community in other parts of the world but the most the people who need it the most and the most challenging are people who are in the global south or people living in in countries that are not like here in the west they're of they they're under they're under the control of authoritarian regimes yeah, or dictatorships so some of the first communities that we've worked with over the last year when private beaters and so on have been people in Latin America, communities in West Africa, like the one I said, communities in South Africa. Also, we're talking to some communities that are represented by activists or human rights defender groups. And we have some initial conversations with certain corporates as well, who maybe want to, instead of giving their Bitcoin, if they're maintaining a Bitcoin treasury and giving it to a third party to custody, They can set up a multi-sig very easily with Fediment, and so they can take control of their own Bitcoin treasury within the company, but still doing it in a way which is very simple for them because they're non, non-technical. So we have examples of all of these already, and we're learning from them. Here at this event, we've set up something, well, we've worked with BTC Prague, and they've set up, we've, we've advised them, and they've set up a, a pop-up federation. Yeah, and that's, a, again, another use case. If you're a festival, a concert, or so on, You have it, it's a community for a few days. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a pop up community, and so you have things you want to buy and sell. There's people you meet. You want to interact with them. Maybe you buy something for someone and they owe you money, and then they can just send you the money back easily. Or you want to find information about the event. So this is again another use case. Yeah. And think about cool. the hundreds of millions of people who go to festivals, concerts, conferences um, around the world. Okay, no limits. There's no, any time, so humanity has three ways it levels itself up. One is by individual excellence, learning, study. In the Bitcoin world, the equivalent would be self-custody, doing everything yourself. Um, the second is through competition and capitalism and, and so on. In the Bitcoin world, that would be running a commercial business and providing it as a third party. But there's a third way we level ourselves up, and that's through collaborating with other people. Not competing and not doing it all yourself, but having each other's back. Yeah. Collaboration is community. And in the Bitcoin world, until recently, there was no technology that took that mechanism and allowed us to supercharge it. That solution is Fedimint and Fedi, which is, the, which is our first step towards a federated OS, what we call the federated OS. This allows us to take this technology of community And we can combine it with freedom technologies like Bitcoin, like Lightning, like Fedimint, like the entire Lightning and Bitcoin and Fedimint ecosystem, so that we bring them together to level up humanity. That's what we do. Okay. Super cool. Thank you very much. Follow up. No problem. <laughs> It was a pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.